Welcome to In Him with Pastor Dan Wormuth of Joplin Family Worship Center, located on East 7th Street in Joplin, where they are passionate about sharing the freedom and forgiveness found in Jesus Christ. Now, here's Pastor Dan with this week's edition of In Him. I got my mind made up. There's something about being persuaded that neither death nor life nor principalities or anything will be able to separate me from the love of God. That that persuasion. Amen. We've got to learn to be persuaded. I was really moved today during worship. Every one of those songs really had to do with this message today, that all of God's promises are yes and amen. Uh, the problem is, though, we oftentimes, we we look at what God wants to do, and we just kind of look at it as an option. Not realizing that God is wanting to show us his wonders, but it's through the path by which we've got to have a made-up mind. Amen. You know, we at the beginning of the year, we prayed for our young people. We prayed for our, our early years. We prayed for our children going into public schools and all the schools, private schools. We prayed for our teenagers going into high school. And we prayed for our college students going into college. And I was just reminded today as we were singing, don't you tell me he can't do it. I felt like the Holy Spirit said, you need to up your prayers for these young people. Because now, you know, they had all summer long where they just got to be, you know, away from the peer pressure, right? And so they're refreshed, they're all ready to go, they're all ready to take their stand. But then friendships start getting challenged. The accuser of their brethren starts pointing their finger. Doubt starts coming and rejection becomes a real thing. And God is needing our prayers to pray for them that they would take a stand. Amen? We need our young people to take a stand. We need them to feel the presence and the power of God. And I just want to remind all of our students, all of those who are taking a stand, even in your workplaces, it's sad to say, but some of us have to take a stand even in our family. We have family members who who don't respect the decisions that you have made as a Christian, but we have got to take a stand and we have got to say, though he slay me, even if he slayed me, yet will I serve him. And sometimes we just have to remember the things that the Lord has done for us to get us through the now of what he wants to do. Amen. Sometimes we have to look back and we have to say, God, you know, when everybody else, you know, listen, I'm a woman and sometimes I'm not received just for preaching. There are some people today that probably might have turned off their, their online knowing that I was a woman. There are some people when, you know, in this culture that sometimes they wouldn't listen because I'm a woman. They stayed home today. You know, and that can feel like rejection. And I'll be honest with you, it does. It feels like rejection. But I can't let that become my excuse to not fulfill the call of God on my life. And I'm asking you to do the very same thing. You know, some of you are called to be a bass player. Some of you are called to be an acoustic player. Some of you are called to be an electric guitar player. But you're like, I don't have the money or I haven't done it. or I know I should. Some of you have giftings and callings in Christ Jesus, and you have just said, yeah, I know, I need to help out here, I know, I need to help out there. Well, listen, we need a made-up mind, and once our mind is made up that we're going to do it, God will begin to open doors that you will not believe. Our very own Don and Debbie Kyler are going to be going, um, I think next month or soon, to Belize. And they're, they're finishing up a building that they have been giving money towards and helping and, and just paying staff down there to, to build this building for these pastors who have a call in their lives. And they said, you know, while we go down there, you know, 
we should, we should do something. It's, it's going to be near Christmas, so we need to buy Christmas presents for the kids. So they said yes. They made up their mind. They were going to they were going to make a way. And the look on Debbie's face, she said, as soon as she decided to do that, the prices for toys and a door and an opportunity that opened up for her just became overwhelmingly easy to do where they're going to be able to give at least 150 children at least three presents for Christmas. Amen. So sometimes all of the answer doesn't show up at once. It shows up in our yes. It shows up in our yes. And pastors told us many times about when, when the tornado had hit and devastation and we were becoming overwhelmed by the task at hand. You know, and, and, you know, we called Red Cross and we said, you know, our building's available. And they said, oh, are you certified with the Red Cross? I said, well, no. Well, then we can't use you. But you know what? God told us to do it. But I could have let somebody who's in authority tell me, somebody who is well-trained, somebody who knows what they're doing. Everybody knows who the Red Cross is. And, you know, they're the number one people that you call for disaster relief next to FEMA. And they're the people that you call. So I begin to believe their lie that there was nothing we could do. Until my cousin, Keith O'Neill, said, Cindy, you're a church. You don't need Red Cross's permission to do what you are called to do. And I want to tell you, you don't need everybody's permission to do what you are called to do. And sometimes we wait for that affirmation. We wait for that encouragement. But you can't, and you know, that can be the wind underneath our wings when they say, go do it. But you cannot rely on man's approval to take a stand where we need to take a stand to do anything that we're called to do. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Have you ever heard the phrase, okay, I'm, I'm going to like clean it up a little bit. Uh, cover up little children's ears who are like sponges. Okay, on this one, all right. Have you ever heard the phrase poop or get off the pot? I'll make it cleaner. Fish or cut bait? Put up or shut up? Amen? Those are all idioms about saying, make a decision and get moving. I used to call myself second guest Cindy. Because when I was first leading praise and worship in, in Bethel, my husband, he, he was the praise and worship leader, the piano player, and then thank God the Lord called Joe down to Jackson, and so he began playing, and pastor began focusing more on other things, and he says, Cindy, you're going to be the praise and worship leader. And it's like, oh, I'm just used to being the follower. I just want to be the follower. I don't want to be the leader. I don't want to do that. You know, have you ever felt that way? I just want to be the follower. You tell me what to do and I'll do it. But there are some times that God is telling you to take the lead and it's time to take the lead. And so even though I didn't feel experienced, even though I didn't feel qualified, I did feel called. I have a heart to worship. I followed with my husband for many, many years and he said, Cindy, it's time. You need to lead it. So I embarked on this decision. I embarked upon this calling and you know, I would mull over in my mind, what are we going to sing? What are we going to do? And, you know, I would think of this song, that song, this song, that song. I would think about the tempo of each song because flow is very important in a praise and worship set. You don't want to sing a key that is in C here and then drop to B on the second song. There's just like all these little things that bears witness with your spirit that is called flow that just causes you to just keep moving from one worship thought towards the Lord to another. So, I mean, I just wanted to be the very best that I could be at being a worship leader. So I studied about the flow. I studied about the tempos, the keys, the context, the rhythm, and everything. And it's like, and now we got to narrow down thousands of songs down to four. You know, I mean, I used to feel like I just got to go into the Holy of Holies. I just got to put all that skill aside, and I just need to, God, what do you want us to do? 
you know, and I would seek, I would even fast sometimes. But week after week after week, it's like the Lord just kind of says, Cindy, it's not that hard. (laughs) I would try so hard to do it right and to do it perfect that whenever I got to, I would, I would tell, you know, Minister Joe on Friday, okay, here's the songs. And then Saturday, I'm like, nope, those are not the songs. These are the songs. And then on the way to church on Sunday morning, I'm like, nope, those aren't it either. Or we're going to take this one out. We're going to make this one. Or we're going to make four, number two. And we're going to just move all these around. And thank God they're so accomplished. They never gave me a hard time. But I can only imagine how frustrated it would be to have a leader who's constantly changing her mind. Sunday morning, we would get into rehearsal. It's like, mm, I'm just not feeling that one. I'm just not sensing that one. Let's change it to this one. Then I'm like, oh God, please show up. And then he would. He's faithful. You know, you lift him up. You give him praise. He's going to show up is what I learned. And then I went to a leadership conference. And second guest Cindy was told that she needed to quit making her list on Saturday night. And I'm like, no, I can't quit. that. No, I want to make sure it's always God. And then they said, they must have read my mind because as they were preaching to everybody in this leadership conference for praise and worship, they said, if you can hear God on Saturday, you can hear God on Monday. <laughs> and I'm like, well, yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure. I'm Pentecostal. We're supposed to like do everything last minute. <laughs> We're supposed to stay open to anything Jesus wants to do. You know, and the problem with that, though, is you stay in indecision. It becomes a very comfortable zone to be in. If I use doing something last minute as my excuse of relying on the Holy Ghost, eventually it becomes a lie and an excuse not to seek him early. And the Bible says, seek him early and he will be found. Amen. We need to learn to seek God early in our situations. God needs to, he's our steering wheel, not our spare tire. We don't wait to get into an accident and then change the tire. We let him be the steering wheel. Amen. We let him guide us. We seek him early. And so there's just, you know, I I just really feel like the Holy Spirit is saying, it's time to live from a made up mind. I did begin seeking the Lord early. I stopped making, I stopped second guessing myself. And you know what? It was a challenge. It's like, even today, I'm like, Lord, are you sure this is the message you want me to preach? You know, in fact, there was another message I wanted to preach and I kept trying to form it, but it was not bearing witness with my spirit. And he just kept pointing to this message. He just literally just kept doing this. You know, sometimes when God tells us something, we're like, but I want to do this instead. Can't you just bless what I'm doing? It's time for us as Christians to realize we need to start doing what God is blessing. We can ask God to bless what we're doing, and there are times that he will. There are times he's like, you choose. And that's wonderful. Because he's saying, when he says you choose, he's saying, I'm going to bless whatever decision you make. I do care about your will. I gave you one. So many times we as Christians think that we don't, we're not supposed to have a will. That God took it away from us. God wants to use your will. God wants to bless you with your will. He wants to empower your decisions. He wants to bless them. But we can't let it all become about us to where we say, well, then I just need you to bless what I'm doing. Check in once in a while and say, am I doing? Ask yourself the question, am I doing? what you are blessing. There are many times that we want God to work in on our timing. We want God to, to move heaven and earth because after all, I need to do this, I need to do that, and I need it right now. And when it's not happening, we need to step back and we need to say, what lesson are you trying to teach me right now? What do I need to learn from this? Are you wanting me to pray for it to be into existence? Do you want me to pray for it to come into existence? Are you needing me to just trust you with the process? Are you needing me to just move on your timing? 
there are too many times we as Christians want God to move on our timing. Well, I'm ready now, Lord. Well, guess what? We're not promised tomorrow. Well, tomorrow I'll do that. When my kids are grown, I'll do this. You know, when, when, when I retire, I will do this. When I have more time, I will get to it. That is asking God to move and bless and do what you're called to do on your timing. And I think we need to stop as Christians, if you really want to see God move mightily in your, in your lives, keep an open heart to say, God, I want to do what you're blessing and I want to move in your timing. It's all about your timing, Lord. And I'm not going to go by my feelings. I'm not, I may not feel like it. Listen, my husband didn't feel like getting back on that plane and going another nine hours, a 24-hour excursion to get to another continent. He wasn't, but, and, I, and I asked him, I said, are you excited? And he goes, excited is not really the word. <laughs> but I'm doing it because I feel that the Lord wants me to do it. And I'm doing it out of relationship for what I was asked to do. And I'm he is having a good time and all is well. But you know, sometimes we wait for our feelings to dictate to us God's timing. And how many times have we missed the mighty hand of God or an open door on our behalf simply because we didn't feel like it? Simply because we just thought, well, God, I understand. Have you ever said that? God calls you to do something. It's on your heart to do it, but then you don't do it. And you're like, well, God knows my frame. He knows. He understands. Yep. And he'll call somebody else and they'll get to see his wonder working power. It's the best way to come out of depression. It's the best way to come out of despondency. It's the best way to to get out of a rut is to go back and say, what am I not doing that you have asked me to do? James 1.8 says, a double-minded man is what? In all his ways. I realized that as second guest Cindy leading the praise and worship and the Lord, once he revealed that to me, I realized I second guess a lot. I make a decision, then I second guess it. Oh, maybe I'm not supposed to. Well, maybe this would be better. Maybe that would be better. You know, sometimes the Lord is just wanting us to make a decision and stick with it. Amen. When he tells you that one time the Lord told me, he says, I want you to do a drive through prayer out there. And I'm like, okay, but I don't know how to do one. Like, what if somebody gets hit and run over by a car? You know, I mean, it's just almost like when you work in a business where there's a lot of liabilities, you think in terms of insurance. (laughs) And so when you think of in terms of insurance, you're like, would that be covered by insurance if somebody got ran over by a car? Well, I really don't want anybody ran over by a car. How am I going to do this? And if I don't come up with an answer, oftentimes we just shelf it. Well, I don't know how to do it, so if the Lord has called you to do something, then it is time to say, all right, Lord, show me how. And he may not show you the entire picture. Young people, God isn't going to show you the entire picture of your life. He's going to, you know why? Because you know, just like you cannot take an 11 by 17 picture and put it and fit it in a 5 by 7 frame, you would have to destroy the picture to get it to fit. So instead, the Lord in his grace towards us and his love and his mercy, he gives us one step at a time. And then when we act upon that step, clarity comes. Clarity comes. When I just stepped down and said, okay, we're just going to start announcing it. I'll meet with some people. We'll brainstorm about how to best work this drive through prayer thing. You know, instead of having the answers, listen, there are many times you're not going to have the full answer on how to do what God has called you to do. You just have to take that one step and you have to begin there. You begin again with your yes. Okay, I'm going to do it. So how am I going to do it? I don't know how to do it. I'm going to ask people who might have done it before. 
You know, I got on Google and I began, any other churches out there do drive through prayers? How did you do it? You know, and we just begin to work out all. And you know what? It was one of the most glorious events. I remember it was Alice who said, I said, how often should we do it? Should we do it once a month? Should we? She goes, no, you should do it every week so people, for a month at least, so that people get used to that time and that date. I'm like, oh, that makes sense. So we did it. We did it every Saturday, I think at one o'clock, because it was in the winter. It was around Christmas time, and it was very cold. So I think we came out here at one o'clock every Saturday for a month. We put it out there. We had signs out there, drive through prayer so people would know. And then people would come in, and I found myself being a little shy, like, what if they ask me to pray about something I don't know what to pray about? And again, our mind, it's at enmity with God. It's always going to come up with an excuse or a reason or a question that makes total sense, and when you don't have the answer, then we just, we drop it. But I'm telling you, that the wonder-working power of God is in the risk. If you want to know more about God, risk doing what he's called you to do. Start with the yes and begin a plan and begin to do it. Maybe some of you have already got the skill. You just need the obedience. You just need the obedience. So, you know, I, you know, I, I went out there. I thought, we need to put intercessors out there. You know, people like who pray for people all the time. And, and I'll just, um, I'll hold the signs, you know. <laughs> we like to isolate, like right? We like to hide behind what we feel like we can't do. But the Lord just kind of kept going, uh-uh, uh-uh. So there are people coming in, and this one lady, she, she had paint all over her hands. She just came from work. She was crying. She was just falling apart. She said, thank God you were here because I saw the signs and I really need prayer right now. She said, I just lost my children. And I thought she meant that they died, you know. And so immediately I'm like going, help. I'm like praying these little flash prayers to God. Like he said, ask her what she means by that. I said, what do you mean you lost your children? I mean, I didn't have, I didn't have counseling skills and four out, you know, four years, six years. I had the all knowing one. You have the all knowing one inside of you. And if you keep waiting for a degree, if you keep waiting for, you know, another reason for you to be fully equipped before you act, you're going to miss out. You're going to miss out on your destiny. And I want to encourage you today to just say yes to the Lord and trust that all-knowing one who lives inside of you to give you the answers. So when she began to explain, she said, well, I let them see their daddy and they weren't supposed to, so they took my children away. I need them back. I need them back. I need them back. And the Holy Spirit began to guide me and direct me and show me what to pray. She was so full of fear that she wasn't even going to hear my prayer. But I know she needed faith and she needed agreement. So I just began leaning on the Holy Spirit. And the first thing I prayed was, Lord, even if she can't get them back, protect their heart from getting the wrong message right now. Protect their heart. That's what that mama wanted. That mama wanted those children protected. And she knew she was the called one to do it. I would have thought that I would have just prayed for those children to come back. But the first thing the Lord told me, protect their hearts from getting the wrong message. You know, so I began to just, yeah, I learned something about the Lord right there. I learned something I didn't know because I said yes to something I didn't know how to do. I took a risk and I learned. I learned. And I'm asking you today to risk. I'm asking you today to take a stand. I'm asking you today to um, lose the double-mindedness. Ask the Lord to show you how you might be double-minded. Abraham Lincoln said, my great concern is not whether God is on our side, My great concern 
is to be on God's side. Exodus 32, 26, Moses cried to the children of Israel, who is on the Lord's side among you? And he was asking the whole nation of Israel, who is on the, after the Ten Commandments were written and they had made another God out of gold. He's like, I need to know who is on the Lord's side. All of y'all look like you have gone astray. And there are many, many Christians, I'm here to tell you, we're going astray. We're going astray by just not staying in the word and staying in his presence and, and growing an intimate relationship with Jesus Christ. And the Lord, I feel like the Lord is asking us today, who is on the Lord's side among you? Who is going to stand on the side of the right? We got it. If you're the only one, I, you know, I was feeling a little lonely there in that front row. It was totally empty, but just me. And I'm like, well, I know where everybody is and all is well. So there's no point of getting emotional about it. But it kept bothering me a little bit. And I kept trying to shake it off. And instead of shaking it off, I said, God, if I'm the only one to stand and they're all standing, nobody is. But the, the point is sometimes we have to say, if you're in college, young people in school, if you're the only one standing on the side of the right, you got to take your stand. And I pray that you feel empowered by the Holy Spirit. He will honor it. He will bless you for it. He will comfort you and he will make a way. He will give you godly friends. Family members, you might be the only one in your family who is standing alone in your faith and your walk with Jesus. I've seen many people in this room stand alone. Husband leaves, children leave, everybody turns away from God. But this one mama stands in faith and believes. She, she has seen too much about what God has done. How do you stand alone when you need to stand you begin recalling every experience you've had with Jesus and you begin to remember them. You begin to remember every time. I had a lady once come to me and telling me about issues with, with their marriage. And, and, and it was overwhelming and it sounded hopeless. It sounded like there was no hope and there was no chance. And I, and as I would listen to her, I thought, I don't even know how to, I feel a little hopeless myself, God, about this. (laughs) But I began to pray. I said, can I pray for, I even said, can I pray for you? Thinking, you know, my head's going, no, no, you don't want to pray because you don't know what to pray. But you know, I've learned over the years, just begin giving thanks and the Lord just begins to show you how to pray. But it begins with the yes. Many times we avoid relationships because we don't feel like we have the answers. Thank you for listening to In Him with Pastor Dan Wormuth of Joplin Family Worship Center. Listen to this broadcast again at KNEO.org. You can also download a podcast version of today's message by searching KNEO on iTunes. Joplin Family Worship Center is located on East 7th Street in Joplin and has ministries for all ages. They invite you to join them this week for Sunday morning worship at 10 a.m. and Wednesday evening service at 7 p.m. Find out more at jfwc.org or facebook.com slash Joplin Family Worship Center. Follow Pastor Dan on Twitter at Daniel H. Wormuth. Thank you for listening. And remember, in Him, you are free. Are you a Christian who likes to read? If not, there's a whole world of Christian publishing out there that you're missing out on. I invite you to check out the Author's Corner podcast where I talk to the latest Christian authors each week about their new book releases and what's coming next. So if you're ready to jumpstart your spiritual growth with the newest books and the authors who write them, check out the Author's Corner podcast with me, Roberta Foster.